welcome to this video where I wanted to have a look at contact binary stars and what they actually are. But first, let's have a look at binary stars in general. So a binary star system is where you have two stars that orbit a common center of mass. And they can be different sizes, slightly different orbits, and they're not particularly rare either. So binary star systems can be quite common. Now there's a few different variations of a binary star system that you can have. If you have a system that has very elliptical orbits, so these are highly elliptical orbits of these two stars, it means that the stars get very close to each other each orbit. And when they get close to each other, their gravitational forces actually stretch each other out. So the stars become non-spherical and become almost ellipsoid in shape. So during their orbit, the stars get stretched and then they relax back again. And these particular sorts of binary stars are known as a heartbeat star. And the reason for that is, when you look at the light given off by these stars, so normally you can't really resolve the two individual stars in a binary system because they're too far away. But you can measure the combined light from the two stars. And with the heartbeat stars, as they get stretched, they become bigger as we see them. There's a bigger surface area emitting light towards us. So they get brighter and then they get dimmer as they kind of oscillate as they move further away. So they actually create a heartbeat-like shape in their brightness over time. That's just why they're called a heartbeat star. Now that's a particular sort of binary star. And another sort of binary system that you may be familiar with is type 1a supernovas. So these are part of a white dwarf red giant system. So you've got a small white dwarf star and then a companion star, which is a much larger red giant. And the white dwarf will pull material off the red giant and it will get to a certain mass it's about 1.4 solar masses where it reaches the ignition temperature of carbon because the, the bigger it gets, the hotter it's going to get because the gravitational force is collapsing it. And once it hits that mass, you'll have a supernova explosion. This is a, a type 1a and these originate from binary star systems as well. But a contact binary is where you've got two stars that are orbiting each other. So it's a binary system. But this time round, they're so close to each other that their outer envelope, almost like their outer atmosphere, I suppose, is the same as each other. So they actually share the same envelope between the two stars. They're that close together that they're no longer individual stars. They're actually touching each other. But they're still orbiting a common centre of mass. So they're still a binary system, but they are under the same envelope, basically. Now, how do they get like that? Well, when they form, they'll form in a disk at relatively wide orbits. And then over time, they actually migrate in together. So they have to get closer and closer until they're in that contact binary kind of configuration, really. And then at some point, they will continue to spiral in and they will likely collide. And this could result in something like a nova or a supernova. Now on the left hand side, you've got a nova, which is a smaller version of a supernova, really. And on the right hand side is the Crab Nebula, which is the result of a type 2 supernova, which is the core collapse of a large star. So once those contact binary stars has migrated inwards and actually collided with each other, you probably expect a significant explosion in the form of a nova or supernova as they combine together. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.